The huge spike in oil prices pumped up profit at Schlumberger. The world's largest oil field services company reported Friday quarterly adjusted profit nearly doubled to $587 million, beating analyst targets. With oil prices surging about 50 percent last year, higher crude and natural gas prices drove up demand for the company's services and equipment. Schlumber J sees further growth. Its CEO, Olivier Lepouche, forecasts demand for oil will top pre-pandemic levels before year-end and strengthen even more next year. He expects the company will boost capital spending in North America by at least 20 percent in 2022. Analysts praised the results, but were disappointed that the company kept its dividend flat. Schlumber J shares, which have climbed by roughly a fifth this year, rose at the market open Friday, but shed their gains as oil prices turned south. Airbus and Qatar Airways were once the closest of partners, but now they face a deepening legal rift. The European jet maker says it's revoking an order for 50 planes placed by the Mideast airline. That as Qatar demands compensation for other jets which it says are flawed. The airline has stopped flying 21 of its A350 long-haul planes after finding peeling paint, cracked window frames and other issues. It wants over $600 million to make up for the problems, and another $4 million for every day the grounding drags on. Airbus concedes there is an issue, but is furious at any suggestion of a safety concern. It says the airline has lent on its local aviation regulator to order a grounding in a bid to secure compensation. European regulators say they have found no safety issues with the planes. Other airlines have seen similar problems with their A350s, but have not been ordered to keep them on the ground. Now Qatar is seeking a legal order to stop Airbus delivering any more of the jets. The plane maker says it will deny every aspect of Qatar's complaint. The crisis in Myanmar following last year's military coup is driving two oil majors out of the country. Total Energy and Chevron made the announcement Friday. Myanmar has been in turmoil since the army overthrew the elected government in February 2021 and detained its leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Security forces are said to have killed more than 1,400 people and arrested thousands, though the ruling junta disputes those numbers. A number of firms had already pulled out of the country following the coup. Total and Chevron were part of a joint venture operating the Yadana gas project off Myanmar's southwest coast. Total said in a statement it could no longer contribute positively to the country. Chevron said it had to prioritise the safety of its employees. Rights groups supported the move and said more companies should follow suit. They also called for sanctions on Myanmar's oil and gas projects. Another energy giant, Shell, said Friday it no longer held exploration licenses in Myanmar. Netflix was one of the big winners in a time of lockdowns. It added millions of users and saw revenues soar. But as the world edges back towards normality, some think lockdown winners now look like losers. Netflix shares tumbled nearly 20% after it warned that subscriber growth would be less than half of analyst predictions. It was a similar story at Peloton. Shares there dropped by almost a quarter after it said it was resetting production and reviewing staff numbers. That as fitness fans head to the gym instead of using its gear. Data from S3 partners indicate short sellers have made big profits by betting against the firm. Other major names like communications platform Zoom are also in traders' sites. A fund run by Direction that tracks work-from-home stocks has dropped 9% so far this year, compared to a 6% fall for the broader US market. And it's a similar story in Europe. Online supermarket Ocado and takeaway app Delivery Hero, both lockdown champions, have underperformed markets so far this year. German meal kit delivery service HelloFresh has also suffered. Now the question is whether lockdown losers, including airlines and travel firms, might start to regain their appeal. Stocks on Wall Street fell for a third straight week. The three main indexes dropped sharply Friday as Netflix's sour earnings outlook dented investor sentiment. 
The S&P 500 and NASDAQ suffered their worst weeks since the start of the health crisis in March 2020, and the NASDAQ sank deeper into correction territory. O'Neill Global Advisor Senior Portfolio Manager Randy Watts says the NASDAQ faces more downside risk. Over 25% of the NASDAQ is off 50% or more from its high, but I don't think time-wise we're completely through this correction. I still think it's a process that has to continue, and we're likely to then trade sideways and consolidate a bit before heading back up. The Dow fell 450 points, or one and a third percent. The S&P 500 plunged nearly two percent, and the Nasdaq plummeted two and three quarters percent. Netflix was the top decliner on the S&P. Shares plunged almost 22 percent. The world's largest streaming service disappointed investors with its weak forecast for quarterly subscriber growth. That dragged down other streaming stocks, including Roku and Disney, which was the Dow's top decliner. Another so-called stay-at-home stock, Peloton, recouped some of Thursday's steep loss, rising nearly 12 percent. The exercise bike maker denied a report that it was halting some production. Next week, inflation-wary investors will closely watch the Federal Reserve's meeting for clarity on its plans to tighten monetary policy.